Hi, welcome to my channel. I thought I'd do a video on baby boy names inspired by Irish gods. I did a video before about girl names inspired by Irish goddesses and this is the male version. Each god has a different story and representation and I'm gonna go through all of those. And um, these stories are thousands of years old, so there's a lot of different interpretations of them out there and people might argue on exact details. Um, I'm just doing a very basic summary and um, I don't mean any offense if what I say is different to what you believe in. Um, and if you like this kind of content, please like and subscribe for more and let's get started. There are so many Irish gods and too, too many to fit in one video. So today I'm gonna to focus on the Tua de Danann gods. They were an ancient mythological tribe of gods who ruled over Ireland about 4,000 years ago. And um, some of them were kings, some of them were warriors, and I'm gonna go through some of them now. First up is Dagda. And Dagda is not a common name in Ireland, but I thought I would start with this one because he's basically the father of all gods. All of the gods are connected or related in some way, and Dagda is top of the hierarchy. Um, and Dagda is an easy one to pronounce and spell, just Dag, Da, Dagda. Sometimes you can have a H between the G and the D, but more common without. And um, Dagda means good god and he was a very powerful leader. And as I said, it's not a common name in Ireland today, but a modern variant of the name could be Dara, spelled either that way or that way. I was gonna spell them out, but you can just read them out. <laughs> Too difficult to spell out. Dara or Dara. Um, Dagda. Next up is Nuada, and he was said to be the brother of Dagda. And it is pronounced Nuada, but the emphasis can either be on the Nu, Nuada, or on the Ada, Nuada. Sometimes it can also be spelt with a H, which would change the pronunciation to Nua. Um, I guess a modern version of it would be Noah. He was the god of many things, but he was mostly known as the god of warfare and magic. And he's best known for having a silver arm. So he was a king and he lost his arm in battle. But the rule was that a king could not be a king unless he was perfectly intact. So when he lost his arm, he could no longer be king. And Bress became king. But Bress was um, a tyrant. He wasn't really... Um, liked by the people so Nuada had a silver arm built so that he could rule again and he overthrew Bress to become king again. And going from that we'll talk about Bress, the tyrant king. It's spelled B-R-E-S but it's pronounced Bress like chess. And he was the god of fertility and agriculture. And Bress was said to be very handsome, very good looking, but um, he lacked leadership skills which is why he was um, not a good king and when he was overthrown by Nuada he was not happy about this and there was a big battle um, and he lost the battle but his life was spared in return for him teaching um, everyone about agriculture and making the lands of Ireland um, fruitful I guess so that's why he's known as the god of agriculture and Bress as a name in Ireland today, I don't think is popular. I don't know any Bresses. There's a Brez, and um, there's a popular musician called Brez, but that's not his first name. It's his last name, Breslin, as a nickname. But I can't even think of any modern variants of the name Bress, but um, except for that one, Brez. <laughs> Next up is Angus, and he was the son of Dagda, and it's pronounced Ain Gus. Angus. And it can also be spelt A O N G H U S. And while a lot of these names are very rare, Angus I think is still, it's pretty well known today, you know, Angus or Angus. And Angus is the god of love. And the story of Angus is that he used to live in Newgrange. If you don't know what Newgrange is, it's in County Meath and it's one of the oldest buildings in the world. It's older than the pyramids, it's older than Stonehenge. And Angus used to live here. And one night he had a dream about a beautiful woman and he fell in love with her and he had to find her. So all of Ireland was searched looking for this woman from his dream. And finally she was found, but there was a twist. She would turn into a swan. So then Angus himself turned into a swan so that they could be together forever because they were in love. So today he is the um, patron of young lovers who look to Angus to help them overcome their obstacles. Next up is the brother of Angus and another son of Dagda, and that's Dean Kicked. 
and um, it can be pronounced a few different ways depending on where in Ireland you are. So some ways to pronounce it are Dion Kecht, Dion Keucht, or Dean Kecht. Um, and the it's kind of like um, in Irish, there, it's not a, like a strong kht, it's like a kht. And there's a fada over the e, and a fada is a accent that elongates the sound of the vowel. And Dean Caked, it wouldn't be a popular name in Ireland today. I don't know any Dean Cakes, but um, Dean, I guess, would be a modern form of the name. My nephew is called Dean, his middle name, and I absolutely love it. Dean Caked was best known for um, being the god of medicine and healing. He was a well known physician, and he is the one who made the silver arm for Nuada. Nuada would have been his uncle. Dean Kicked had a son who I'm going to talk about next and his name was Mich. And again, it's um, the kh, the kind of gentle kh. So, me, uch, miach. You know, I think miach is a name today. I don't know how popular it is. Um, I guess there are a few miachs, but I think more popular versions of the name would maybe be Mick or Michael or the Irish Michal. I'm guessing, I don't know, like I don't I don't know any Miochs anyway today. But um Mioch was similar to his dad, he had the power of healing. So he was also known as um a god of healing and medicine. And the story of Mioch is that um, you know, his dad gave Nuada the silver arm, but Mioch thought it wasn't good enough. Like he should have an arm of flesh and blood, and he was a little bit more talented than his dad, so um, he gave Nuada a proper arm back. And when Dean Caked found out about this, he was furious, and he ended up killing his son. So a bit of a tragic end for Mioch. By the way, like all of these gods, there are so many more stories to them. There's so much more about them, and um, but I'm just kind of taking little snippets to fit in this video. Next up is another one of Dean Kicked's sons and Miak's brother, and that is Kian. And Kian is probably the most popular name today out of all the Irish gods. And um, you know, Kian is very well known in Ireland today. I think we all know Kian. And it is pronounced Ki in Kian or Keen. Just Keen. And it is spelled with a fada over the I traditionally, but these days a lot of people just leave off the fada and it's no big deal. And um, Kian would be known as the god of war and weaponry. And he was well known for having a magical cow whose milk never ran dry. And out of all the gods, Kian is probably one of the lesser known. Like a lot of the gods were very prominent and powerful. Kian, not so much, but one of the most well-known gods was his son called Lu. And that's the next god we're going to talk about. Lu is pronounced like Lu and it's spelled L-U-G-H. And Lu was a great king, he was a great warrior, he was youthful, he was dashing, and he was the master of all arts. Um, he was skilled with everything, but he was probably best known as the sun god, the god of sun. And because he was master of all arts, today he is invoked by artists and musicians looking to the god Lu for inspiration. I love the name Lu. I think it's got such strong roots. Um, today, maybe a more popular variant of the name would be Louis. Um, like, uh, Kate and William's son, Prince Louis, but um, the traditional Irish spelling is, I'm going to put it right there. Next up is Lear, and it's pronounced like Lear, and it's spelled L-I-R, and Lear was known as the god of the sea. And Lear isn't really a popular name in Ireland today, but I guess a modern version of it would be Lee. Lee would be a common name in Ireland, and it could be spelled either L-E-E, -E, or El I Fada. The story of Lear is that there was a king called Bodurg and Lear was not happy about him being king. So Bodurg, trying to make peace, he gifted him his daughter Eve for Lear to marry. So Lear and Eve got married and they had four children and then Eve died. And this is the beginning of one of the greatest Irish stories called the Children of Lear. And one of Lear's children was called A, and he's the next god I'm gonna talk about. A is pronounced like A, and it is spelled A-E-D, but it can also be spelled A-O-D-H. And the Anglican version of, the English version of this name is Hugh. 
and A means fire and he was known as the god of the underworld. And A is part of the story of the children of Lear. Lear remarried and the stepmom did not like the kids at all so she turned them into swans for 900 years. And there's so much more to the story that I just do not have time to go into, but it's a great, it's one of Ireland's best known stories. We all learn about it in school, the children of Lear, and A is one of the children. Next up is Nate, and I've got to be honest, I'm not entirely sure of the pronunciation on this. I researched it so much, and there's so many different opinions, so it can either be Nee it, Nate. it or just neat, or um, sometimes there's a fada over the e, which would make it nay it, or nate. So whichever one of those four you wanna go with, I'm gonna go with neat. And neat was known as the god of war. And out of all the gods, he's probably the most um, lesser known, like his story is very undetermined. So some people say he was an uncle of Dagda and he may or may not have been fully part of the Tue de Danon tribe, but he did fight alongside them and he was a passionate fighter, which is why he's known as the God of War. The next one is Medir and Medir is spelt M-I-D-I-R and it can either be pronounced Mid-Ear, Medir, or Mid-Ur, Midir. And he was known as the fairy king. He was a warrior with Tua de Danon, but he lived among the fairy folk, which is why he was known as the fairy king. And the most well-known story of Medir is the story of Medir and Aideen. And I spoke about this in another video. I think it was the Irish goddesses video, but Medir and Aideen were in love. But unfortunately, Medir was married. And when Medir's wife found out about Aideen, she was furious and she turned her into a fly. But then Angus protected Aideen as the fly. You know, he was the god of love, so he was all for um, helping young lovers. So he protected Aideen as the fly, but Medir's wife found out about this and blew her away where she was uh, swept away for seven years. And then she landed in a wine goblet and uh, this woman drank the wine goblet, swallowed Aideen, and then gave birth to her nine months later. And then Aideen, born, grew up, got married. She had no memory of her past life. She didn't remember Madeir, but Madeir found her, still in love with her. Yeah, it's a big love story, basically. I can't go into too many details now, but uh, yeah, Madeir, he's best known for this love story about him and Aideen. Next up is McCool, and it can be pronounced either McCool, McCool or McCall, McCall. There are so many um, variants, different pronunciations out there, depending on where in Ireland you are, but those would be the main two. There's probably more. There's probably people that would pronounce it McKill or McQuill. Um, I'm gonna stick with McCool. And McCool was the very last king of the Tua de Danon. While he was in power, Ireland was invaded by the Milesians. And the Milesians came and um, had a big battle with the Tua de Danon who were defending their land. And the Milesians won. And they made a deal with the Tua de Danon that Milesians would live above ground and the Tua de Danon would have to live below the ground with the fairies. And eventually the Tua de Danon themselves became fairies. And that's it. That is my video on baby boy names inspired by Irish gods. Um, there, As I said, there are so many more god names. So if you want more, let me know and I'll do a part two. And I will leave it there. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more, please subscribe. And thanks for watching. Bye.